One of the more difficult challenges that most open world games face is that every journey inevitably has to come to an end. Destination is the catalyst for voyages and a driving force for the player to keep moving, but it often doesn't factor into the overall experience in the ways you would think. Whether it's the toppling of a despot, the uncovering of some centuries-old conspiracy, or simply the violent, bloody battle to the top of the woodpile, there has to be something on the horizon to keep charging towards. But once you get there, it rarely feels so definitive. Often is the case that, upon reaching this final waypoint, the biggest and baddest of big bads felled, the credits roll, the trophy notification pops, and the game carries on. There are more tasks to complete, more trophies to earn, more secrets to unearth, and perhaps even the surprise reveal of an even bigger and even badder big bad to rattle your sabre against. And sometimes there are just MacGuffins to collect. Reams and reams of mindless trinkets that cause counters to uptick until one of two inevitable things occurs. You fill out your punch card, or you get bored in the process. In either case, returns are most definitely diminished. The design of games like Assassin's Creed, Horizon Zero Dawn and the like appeals to a certain type of player, one who finds comfort in the grind, in scouring a map for hours on end, collecting up pieces of a puzzle that often has no solution. I'm no stranger to this myself. With certain weather, in a certain mood, at a certain time, it's almost akin to godliness. Sitting down after a long day, switching on to switch off and just ride the dopamine wave. But it's a fleeting existence. One that does the medium no favours as you either complete everything and discover it a hollow victory, or become repulsed by the process and left longing for a proper full stop to an otherwise compelling sentence. These games often struggle to make their worlds make sense within the context of what you end up doing in them. The way that they end up deflating the impact of their conclusion leaves a lot of players in a limbo state. It puts the onus on you to make a judgement call about what you consider a definitive denouement, and when you feel it's appropriate to conclude your time. But how do you end something as vast and complex as an open world game? Well, with The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, we sort of have an answer. Breath of the Wild is a game that sets up its finale almost right from the beginning, and then it proceeds to spend the next 60 hours showing you what is at stake. This iteration of Hyrule is vast, intimidating, but ultimately inviting, built to guide players towards interesting interactions like a windowsill pie in a Looney Tunes cartoon. It sets its rules not just for the player, but for everything in the game, from enemies to fauna to the very elements of the earth. It is also very much a conventional open world. By its core design, there are radio towers to climb and points of interest on the map to explore, quests to complete and equipment to obtain, and that seemingly infinite supply of Korok seeds littered across its map. This is all stuff we've seen before, but in the game's defense, it does do all of it extremely well. The towers and shrines are their own little challenges with fairly minimal repetition, the collectibles all push towards a central goal that ties into the main quest, for none of which completion is a necessity, and there is enough variation in the topography and the means of overcoming obstacles that nothing in the game feels erroneous. Traversal, exploration, combat, self-improvement, it's a lush, bubbling cauldron of symbiotic design. But it is still an open world game, bound by that same emotional entropy that means anything with enough time becomes rote to the point of resentment. I know some players feel this way about this game, and I was so certain that I would too. I told myself that I would move towards the final encounter the very moment I started to get weary of playing, for reasons I'll explain in a moment the game supports this wholeheartedly. To my surprise, however, I still completed nearly all optional quests, upgraded my health and stamina to maximum, and collected every piece of armour in the game. That fatigue never came, and I think the reason for that lies in the game's central thesis. Part of what makes open world games start to feel like a chore is that it quickly becomes apparent that not only is the completionist mentality a goal for its own sake, it's also a cognitive wedge in the intended experience. Often there is a great convergence right just before a point of no return, a narrative bottleneck where you instead go off to mop up any wayward objectives, power yourself up for this one last push. In most cases, very little of this optional ephemera is required to overcome the final challenge, and it exists purely to scratch that 
peculiar itch many of us get from time to time. The problem is that by breaking the pace of the game's narrative so close to its conclusion, the result inadvertently undermines the impact of what should be the experience's finest hour. As these experiences present this very definitive roadmap to their finale, there is a clear delineation between the mandatory and optional parts of the game. The very concept of endgame content seems cherry-picked to act in extreme opposition to the impending stakes of a main storyline. It's why a lot of games are very clear in their messaging about the point of no return, but this artificial consolation sticks out like a sore thumb. I think where Breath of the Wild differs is that the game is ludically coded as all endgame. From the moment you leave the Great Plateau, you are faced with your final foe in plain sight, and you can go and attempt to fight him there and then, if you please. You'll likely die in the process if you're new to the game, but success is technically possible. That you receive every piece of equipment and skill that you will need for the entirety of the game within this tutorial region is further evidence of this intent. And as many members of the Zelda fandom will go on to prove, if you're good enough, you really can charge straight into battle with the monstrous Ganon without any further diversions. Zelda's waiting for you. Go, go, go. Every pursuit in the game wraps back round to this one goal, building up the hero Link to be strong enough to survive the onslaught of Hyrule Castle's lethal defences and the demonic presence that lies in wait at its dark heart. Whether that's enough hearts and stamina, a backup entourage of giant laser-spewing mechs to slice through his health, a reunion with the series' most legendary blade, or just a backpack absolutely chocker with weapons and shields and a blatant disregard for your own safety, preparation is needed. And based on the towering mass of bullshit that awaits you the moment you set foot anywhere near the castle grounds, you'll need all the help you can get. By some miracle of design generosity, it's all optional, in the sense that you can pick and choose what you do and how much you prepare for this final fight. You can do all of it, or none of it. You can suit up with 20 blades and a volley of arrows, a backpack full of health-restoring dinners to gulp down mid-parry, or you can go in naked as the day you were born, with only the items lying around you to defend yourself. The game tells you what might help, and points you in the direction of your allies if you ask it to, but crucially, it doesn't tell you how prepared you need to be. With the castle and Ganon's vaporous presence visible from almost every corner of the map, it's virtually impossible to ignore such an imposing presence, digging into the back of your mind the knowledge that eventually you will have to face this Goliath and save Hyrule once and for all, until Tears of the Kingdom comes out anyway. You have to be prepared and you have to feel ready in your heart and in your gut, because until you face Ganon, you don't know what lies in wait for you, and so when you enter that final arena, you do so with the faith that you have done enough preparation, you have trained enough, and that every step you have taken on this journey is sufficient to help you survive that brutal, final unknown. You can end the game whenever you want, and in making that your choice, Breath of the Wild grants its player a strength unlike any other.